الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. We continue إن شاء الله تعالى with the book of تذكرة السامع والمتكلم by ابن جماعة رحمه الله. And we were in the third chapter in the subject of the adab or the adab to be observed for the متعلم for the learner for the student. Uh, first one, the first part was for himself, in in his own self, in his own character, and the second one, uh, in uh, with regards to his sheikh or his teacher or with the scholars in general, and the adab to be observed with those who are elder and respected and the parents and so on, and we are in the third part or the third chapter in this subject, and that is the manners to be observed while with. His teacher in the dars with the people in the dars in the halqa uh, while they are uh, learning uh, and their relationship with one another. And we mentioned six points. If you missed any of them, we can, uh, you know, um, mention uh, what you missed at the end, inshallah ta'ala. But because of the sake of time, inshallah, we'll continue where we stopped, which is the seventh point. The seventh point. Uh, that he mentioned here from the adab while present in the dars and with dealing with the sheikh, with the teacher and the students also like him. Uh, and there are 11 points here that he mentioned in the subject. Number seven, he said, إذا حضر مجلس الشيخ سلم على الحاضرين بصوت يسمع جميعهم وخص الشيخ بزيادة تحية وإكرام. This is the adab or the manners when someone comes to the majlis. He says to say salam to those who are present in such a way that everybody would hear the salam and he would uh, make specific attention to the teacher or to the sheikh uh, with uh, more attention with the tahiyya or with the salam, whether it's to look at him or to uh, give him more uh, than what he would give to everyone else. وكذلك يسلم إذا انصرف in the same way he would say salam when he leaves. The subject of the salam, as you would see, he, he takes the point here is that uh, a person when he comes to the majlis, he should say salam, which is a very obvious thing. And this is how the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, is upon this. Uh, some of the ulama, even from the Shafi'iyya and the Hanabila and the like of them, they would mention some of the situations or times where it is not recommended, it's not good to say the salam out loud, one of which is if people are sitting in majlis ilm. So if people are sitting, studying the deen, and there's a lecture on, uh, if someone walks in, it is not from the adab to say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Then he disturbed them and he interrupted the majlis, and then they have to reply the salam to him. And uh, some said, but this is uh, the sunnah is to say salam. First of all, as mentioned before, a person should come before the majlis starts. So he would say the salam normally when people are waiting. Uh, but uh, interrupting the majlis, this is not something uh, that is to be done. But rather, if a person comes in, he should say the salam in such a, a voice that is uh, loud enough for those who are very close to him to hear it, not the entire majlis, if it's a big majlis. So if he comes and he sits next to uh, those who are next to him, to the students or so, he would say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, not for everybody to hear it, uh, otherwise this would disturb them. This is while the, the death is uh, is happening, and the same thing even if it before it starts, and there's lots of people, for example, raising the voice with the salam, even entering the masjid, that's not from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ in such a way. And the Prophet ﷺ, he would say the salam in such a way that if someone is asleep, he does not wake up. And uh, to just to make tambih to those who are present. So it's low enough or high enough to only those who are close to him to hear the salam. And to give more attention to the to the teacher or to the sheikh. Uh, and إذا salam. فلا يتخطى رقاب الحاضرين إلى قرب الشيخ. If he makes salam, he does not uh, cross over the shoulders of people to be close to the to the sheikh, unless he is asked to come forward, or unless there's a something else, an exceptional situation where maybe the sheikh wants him to be the one that is close. He would read something uh, in front of everyone, things of that nature. 
ولا يكرم احدا من مجلسه هي does not you know this is the adab of the majlis he does not take someone or ask someone to leave his spot for him he does not uh, make it difficult for people او يزاحمه قصدا or he makes it very crowded by tightening making himself in a tight position so that the people will be in a tight situation uh, and another point fa in atharahu al ghayru majlisahu lam yaqbal illa an yakuna fi dhalika maslaha first of all you should not give up your place for someone else unless as he will mention unless someone of status someone of respect a person of knowledge something like this or your father or something like that uh, but normally you don't give your your place for anyone especially that you come early you and again this is if there is numbers of people they would make sure that they are close uh, to the to the sheikh and and they are uh, attentive to the to the dars uh, but if someone uh, wants to make ithar for you for his spot you would say come uh, in my place you should not accept unless there's benefit even though in matters of ibadah if someone does this you should accept he should not do this because you should make sure that you no one would beat you when it comes to matters of virtue in a good manner but if he if someone else does it for you in this concept or in this context of sitting for uh, matters of ilm don't accept unless there's a benefit that is well known he needs to be there because he's the one that reads for example the book in the presence of the sheikh or something like this or he's doing it out of respect because someone is uh, is old in age or someone that is respected and things like this and that's why also ولا ينبغي لاحد ان يؤثر بقربه من الشيخ الا لمن هو اولى بذلك so no one should give up his position that is make him close to the teacher except someone that has um, a priority or a more right because of his uh, age or his ilm or something like this then uh, he would do that for that reason uh, then uh, sometimes they talk about the specifics so where the best spot to be in and if for example there's so many people and things like this and those who come early they have the right to choose or to be in the place where they see the best so the best place when uh, there's a lecture when there's a dars is uh, he says fa afdal al jama'ati ahq bima ala yaminihi wa yasarihi so the best is those who are on the right and to the left and uh, those who might lean onto the wall those who might have a special need for example again elders things of that nature uh, and it's best that they all together in one position which is easier for the teachers to look at all of them meaning if they're spread all over the place it makes it difficult that's why they need to be close to each other and uh, in front of him uh, and if someone as they again to get us to know some of the things that they used to be in the past some they would continue to do the like of this he says when mubajjalina min mu'id aw za'ir an yaminihi wa yasari the students in front of him and usually those who a visitor uh, someone uh, of a respected uh, matter or status they would sit on the right or on the left of uh, the alim or so but usually the students are right in front of him uh, so that he will give them the attention while he is giving them the dars and there are so many other different adab in the majlis uh, but this is brief in this subject one of which is which is number 8 and yata'addab ma'a hadiri majlis al-shaykh to have the adab to observe the adab with those who are present with his sheikh or with the teacher or with the scholar so this adab is with those who are present why because it's adab ma'ahu part of the adab with the teacher is to have adab with those who are present with the teacher so it's not because of them only but because also to do the respect to the one that is teaching فيوقروا اصحابه so he would respect them and ويحترموا كبراءه is if they are elders and respected ones he would uh, respect them also and those who the sheikh respect uh, they should respect and again we're talking about here especially when a person goes and sits with the kibar ulama this adab these matters of manner should definitely be observed and you would find the stranger the one that did not learn the matters of the adab he would do strange things like the bedouins at the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi walking crossing the 
over the shoulders of the people because he sees a spot and he sits right there. You know, and this is strange for those who are, for example, the students, those who are regularly uh, being present. And that's even one of the things of how to deal with someone like this, as he will mention. So that's why learning these types of etiquettes and manners so that wherever we go, uh, it's something that stays with us. And, and we said it's not because of the person, the teacher or so. This is at all times in the majalis of al-ilm because of the ilm, because of the deen. Uh, regardless of who is the one that is teaching, even if it's someone that is in your level of knowledge. It's out of the respect of the ilm of the deen because al-ilm ibadah, as we said, seeking knowledge is an act of ibadah. So to observe that, Seeking help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, wala yajri suwasta al halqa. It is not to sit in the middle of a circle if there is not necessarily a perfect circle, but if people are uh, like half a circle like this, he does not sit in, in the middle of it. Wala kuddama ahadin illa li darura. He does not come and sit right in front of someone unless it's a necessity because it's too crowded. Because of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wala tadabaru. Do not give your back to one another. Meaning that someone would walk in and he would right there sit and give his back to someone that is behind him. Unless it's a darura, unless it's a necessity. As he says, كَمَا فِي مَجَالِسِ التَّحْدِيثِ مَجَالِسِ التَّحْدِيثِ Crowded, thousands of people are sitting. So then this is definitely no harm in this. وَلَا يُفَرِّقُ بَيْنَ رَفِيقَيْنِ وَلَا بَيْنَ مُتَصَاحِبَيْنِ Two people sitting next to each other. They're close friends or they sit next to each other for a reason. They help one another. They study together, things like this. So he does not come and separate between two sitting next to each other or even if they just happen to sit next to each other. You don't separate between two people to sit between them. Unless there's a reason, a valid reason, and unless he takes permission from them. So to take permission from them, this is definitely is a must. But when to take permission if there's a reason why he wants to sit between them. And, uh, and he says, وَيَنْبَغِي لِلْحَاضِرِينَ إِذَا جَاءَ الْقَادِمِ Those who are present, if someone comes, and يُرَحِبُوا به, They welcome him. They make uh, the person coming welcomed when he comes. وَيُوَسِّعُ لَهُ And they make the place spacious for him if it's tight, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the believers and it's mentioned in the Quran, وَإِذَا قِيَ لَكُمْ تَفَسَّحُوا فِي الْمَجَالِسِ فَافْسَحُوا يَفْسَحِ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ If you are told in the majalis to make space, then do make space. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make space for you, physically and non-physical in non-physical matters. So to make space for them, وَيَتَفَسَّحُوا لِأَجْرِهِ وَيُكْرِمُوا And they honor the guest or the one that comes, uh, the according to the status of the person, and that means to honor the person that is coming. Uh, so if someone comes and the majlis is tight, and sometimes you would see that in the haram or in the, when the people are in a gathering where it's crowded, uh, that they would make space for others. And if it's tight, a person should bring himself together and not to sit at ease uh, as if uh, the place is empty, so that he would give chances for others. وَلَا يُعْطِي أَحَدًا مِّنْهُمْ جَنْبَهُ وَلَا ظَهْرًا Do not give your side to someone, your back to someone next to you. Um, uh, and then um, he should not lean to the one next to him, or he make him like a arm rest, uh, or something of that nature. And he does not stick out from the gathering, if it's a circle or so, he does not stick out on his own, but rather to be with those who are sitting. Now, Fa'idah uh, here, if وَلَا يَتَكَلَّمُ فِي أَثْنَاءِ دَرْسِ غَيْرِهِ أَوْ دَرْسِهِ بِمَا لَا تَعَلَّقُ بِهِ He should not speak, of course, while the dars is on uh, to anyone uh, or speak whatsoever. And if someone... Um, إذا شرع بعضهم في درس فلا تكلموا بكلام يتعلق بدرس فرغ ولا بغيره مما لا تفوت فائدة إلا بإذن من الشيخ وصاحب الدرس. Sometimes a person is allowed to speak, like for example, there's a a minute break or something like this, right? so people can speak to one another. Don't speak except with regards to the the subject that you are learning. Don't mention another درس. Don't mention something else. If it's a short period of time that you're still sitting. It's best so that you don't lose the benefit of what's 
uh, is being said. And as mentioned yesterday, the issue of an mudhakara, to study, is an essential thing. If people go to school, for example, what do they do if they go back from their normal school is that they would study what they took. If they delay it, this is more likely that they would forget. So to make sure that in the same day that whatever you take in the same day, you study it, to memorize it, you you make sure that you are upon it in the same day. And definitely, inshallah ta'ala, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, next week we will be in need of this. And of course, this one, inshallah ta'ala, this week. Uh, now he says, وَإِنْ أَسَاءَ بَعْضُ الطَّلَبَةِ أَدَبًا Another etiquette here, if one of the students, uh, he showed bad manners, whether it's uh, against uh, or towards someone with them, uh, no one from those who are students should not scold him. Leave this to the sheikh. Like, don't do things on your own thinking that this is how to respect, for example, the sheikh. Unless it has been given to the person to do something uh, or unless he would point to him or speak to him in a silent way as a way of nasiha. So don't escalate the situation. If someone says something with bad manners, you should not, hey, you be quiet, you know, leave, whatever, you know, things like this. You don't deal with it with with uh, with harshness, but leave the matter to the sheikh or you would, for example, get up and take the person to the side and speak to him in a in a in a nice way, so that you would avoid the escalation of the matters, um, and don't think that you're when you're doing this in a, in a bad way that you're defending the sheikh or the like of this. Um, and then number nine. So this is some of the etiquettes when it comes to those who are present in the majlis is to observe also the respect to the teacher and to respect them as a result of that. Number nine is uh, the manners of asking. And the asking is, is is a subject that books are written of how to ask your question. It's ilm by itself. It's a knowledge for a person to learn how to ask. But he mentioned here a specific thing about asking that the student should not be shy not to ask about something that is not clear for him. And to comprehend and to understand what he did not understand. So something is, is he's not sure if this is what is meant or something else or something that he doesn't understand yet. And he should ask with talatuf, with kindness, with gentleness, choosing the words of asking. And we talked about that before. You don't say why. What's the evidence of this? I don't see. It doesn't make sense to me. Like these types of things is to be avoided, but in a way with adab, with manners, that he does not understand this point. Uh, does that mean this? You know, in, in such a way that it's not, uh, you don't ask a question to challenge the teacher, for example, to test his knowledge. Uh, you don't ask to show that you are better than your uh, colleagues, for example, that you, you know something that they don't know. But you don't ask to put someone on the spot. You talked about it, with, for example, with your friend before. So you make a, a scene by asking questions and things of that nature. So the intentions are sincere that you are sitting in a session to learn. Even if you know the subject, you humble yourself, you act as if you never heard it before to benefit from it. So the questions uh, in a session of ilm it comes in this context, that you're asking to learn, you're asking to benefit. And let the benefit of others to be later. Because some people think, I want people to benefit. So let me ask this question, so that the benefit will be for everybody. I know the answer. No, leave this to the teacher. He should know this better than you. You understand? And many people, they do this, especially in, the, in some major gatherings, which is against the adab. And they took this from some of the evidences where some would ask a question for the people to benefit, but this should be done in an exceptional way, in limited situations and for people of knowledge. Because sometimes, as mentioned before, the teacher might leave something intentionally. He left it for a reason. And then someone comes and, and he exposes it and he makes it a difficult situation because is he conceding the knowledge or something of that nature. So again, the questioning is that you question because you don't understand yourself. You want to benefit for yourself. Or something, you're not sure if this is what it means or this. 
And especially that if it's the time to ask questions and to use the proper words in asking questions. And Umar radiallahu anhu, he says, he mentioned a statement from Umar radiallahu anhu. He said, Man raqqa wajhuhu, raqqa ilmuh. Man raqqa wajhu, wajhu is face. His, if, if one's face raqqa means become soft, shy, raqqa ilmuh, his ilm will be also be light. Raqqa is when something is soft, something light. So if his face is light, meaning that he's shy, his ilm will be light also. He won't get much knowledge and this is the the non the, the part of shyness that is not good this deen is based on shyness as the prophet said shyness is always good but what is the meaning of the haya the haya or shyness that makes the person abstain from what of course haram abstain from what is not supposed to be done uh, and he would feel the difficulty in doing something that is not appropriate but what is condemned of the haya, if it's correct to call it haya, uh, shyness, is what prevents the person from a benefit. One of which is he sits in the dirt. Something is not clear to him. He does not understand a point. And because he's too shy, he doesn't ask. So he lives with the ignorance in this matter. And he becomes hostage to this ignorance in this subject. Everybody understood it and he doesn't understand it because of his shyness, which is not a good shyness, definitely. The opposite or the other extreme, when someone has غلظة or bad manners or no shyness, what happens? He will be prevented also, even though he might be the one that asking questions and things like this, but he also will be deprived from knowledge because of this harshness in his heart and because of the lack of shyness. So both extremes are to be condemned, but rather to have shyness, but not to stop the person from benefiting or asking about something that he didn't understand. So make it as a rule. Don't leave the dars unless anything that is being mentioned, you understood it. If not, then ask about it. At the end, when it's time for the questions, things like this. Do not bring up something that is not part of the of the session, for example. Don't, don't ask about something else that you don't understand later, if it's the, the time for it. وَقَالَ مُجَاهِدْ لَا تَعَلَّمُ الْعِلْمَ مُسْتَحِنْ وَلَا مُسْتَكْبِرْ Mujahid said, العلم, uh, two types of people, they won't learn. Mustahin, someone that is shy, he doesn't uh, ask when he needs to ask, and he does not come forward to learn. He's, he's too shy to be even present or things like this. Wala mustakbir, or someone that is arrogant, someone he, he sees himself as a knowledgeable person, or he knows what, what is being talked about. So these two types of people, they won't benefit from the ilm. So this is the first one, and the second quote also, it's important for us to remember. Man raqqa wajhu. It's easy to memorize even. Man raqqa, raqqa, you know, raqaiq is the is a word used, kitab al raqaiq or raqaq in Sayyid Imam al Bukhari, the chapter of softness of the heart. Uh, and the raqqa is when, some, when something is light and soft. So, man raqqa wajhu, if his face is raq, again, raqqa ilmu, his knowledge. And the second one, la uh, yata'allamu al ilm. Uh, he would not learn al-ilm mustahin mustahin is the one that is shy wala mustakbir mustahin wala must two types of people they don't learn the one that is shy and the one that is arrogant wa Aisha radiyallahu anha in the authentic hadith rahimallahu nisa' al-ansar lam yakun al-haya'u yamna'uhunna an yatafaqahna fi al-deen may Allah have mercy upon the women of al-ansar their haya did not prevent them from comprehending the deen and learning the deen. So she, up, she confirmed that they have shyness. So they have shyness, and shyness is a basic characteristic for both men and women, but it's more special for women. They have shyness, and that shyness did not prevent them from learning the matters of the deen. That's why they would ask the Prophet ﷺ about the things that is specifically related to women. How, he, how she's going to learn her deen and methods of purification and things like this if she's too shy to ask. But how, how does she ask? And how the words to be used when she asks? This is all from the manners to be observed. وَقَالَتْ أُمُّ سُلَيْمُ So this is now the fourth uh, quote here, two hadith here, and two quotes from Umar and Mujahid before. قَالَتْ أُمُّ سُلَيْمُ لِرَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. أُمُّ سُلَيْمُ she said to the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna Allah la yastahi min al-haq. Hal ala al-mar'ati min ghuslin idha ihtalamat? And see how the fiqh 
was the ilm of Umm Sulaim. She started the question with an introduction to make to to uh, defend herself why she's asking this question or to make a point. Indeed, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is not shy from the haq, as Allah said that in the Quran, uh, in the context when he uh, the ayat was revealed uh, for those who would come and visit the Prophet والسلام, and the Prophet وسلم, would would suffer because of the long stay. And uh, the Prophet ﷺ would be shy to tell them to leave. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the companions, عنهم, if, if they go and they visit the Prophet ﷺ and they eat, then they leave. Don't make the stay long. And then he said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Allah, la min al-haq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not shy from the truth. So she said that, she, that, she said that statement, then she said, Hal al-mar'a is upon the woman, ghusl, taking a shower إذا احتلمت إذا احتلمت الاحتلام is basically the wet dream seeing something in the dream so does she have to take a ghusl like which is well known to the men so is that also happens to the woman she asks this question and then the Prophet ﷺ gave her the, the answer إذا رأت الماء if she sees the, the fluid yes so she did not that did not prevent her which is definitely something to be talked not to be talked about but this is a matter of deen she has to make ghusl or not. So she asked the Prophet And he mentioned a line of poetry. Blindness is not to have uh, long questions, but the, the, the complete uh, blindness is when someone is uh, silent for a long period of time, being ignorant. He's, he's ignorant. And he doesn't want to do anything about it. Don't be satisfied by being ignorant. And ignorant in the sense that you don't have the knowledge of something. Al-jahl is there. We have to always look at al-jahl. Not knowing is a disease. And how to cure ourselves with ilm. So to take the means to cure ourselves from the disease of al-jahl by learning. And part of learning is to ask questions if something is not clear. Not to ask questions before learning. But for the masses, for the normal Muslim, uh, he is not in the process of learning. He needs to ask of how to do things in his matter of the deen and things like this. But for those who seek the knowledge, when it comes to the subject of knowledge, they are patiently learning and studying, and then they ask of what is not clear to them as we heard. Um, and then uh, uh, he says, وَلَا يَسْأَلُ عَنْ شَيْءٍ فِي غَيْرِ مَوْضِعِهِ إِلَّا لِحَاجَةٍ أَوْ عِلْمٍ, أو علم بِإِثَارِ شَيْخِ ذلك. Don't ask about something that is not the time for it. It's not been discussed unless there's a need. Something happened. Something that we need an answer to it now. Or knowing that the sheikh would like for him to ask something like this. And as we heard from these previous and the, all along with these manners, it's very important that the person develop in himself uh, the the understanding of how others are because people should be treated differently some people they treat everybody the same way no we treat our parents different than you treat your friend than you treat your teacher things like this and to be aware of what what makes them happy what makes them sad what makes them angry so that we treat people in that in this way uh, as long as we don't compromise matters of the deen you know that if you say something to someone is is going to make him angry. Why would you want to say it? Right? Rather to be sensitive to how people feel, but according with the rest of matters of the deen, sometimes if people, they have to get angry because you have to speak the truth, then let it be the case. It's not like you want them to get angry. You want to be upon the haq. So the balance in this, this is such an important task, of course. Uh, and since... The talib or the student should not be shy to ask if it's in the proper way, in the proper way of asking, in the proper time of asking, and so on, and the etiquettes of it. He also should uh, not be shy to say, I did not understand. If the sheikh asks him, right, because this again would make him not able to continue, or maybe this is something else is built on it. So it's fine to say, I didn't understand this point. There's nothing wrong with it. And the people are not the same. And of course, those who are with him, again, sometimes when people are young, children, they start laughing at each other and things like this. So uh, with the grown-ups, this is something that is uh, even in their hearts. If someone says, I don't understand, 
don't have in your heart, how can you not understand this? This is very straightforward. In your heart, push that away because this is a sign of arrogance or so humbling oneself. Uh, and we all have to go through that. We have to be not understanding till we understand. Uh, and then he says, if he does not say, I don't understand when he don't understand, it would make him miss two types of benefits. Maslaha, adila and adila. Maslaha, an immediate benefit and a later benefit as a result of not saying, I don't understand. You might say to yourself, I'll understand it later. I'll ask someone else. Right, something like this. If you don't understand, ask, especially that if it's a, there's a room for asking and the matter is easy. And this is something that should be done as it's going to be also mentioned with the manners of the teacher. So as the immediate benefit that he loses, فَحِفْظُ الْمَسْأَلَةِ وَمَعْرِفَتُهَا وَاعْتِقَادُ الشَّيْخِ فِيهِ الصِّدْقَ وَالْوَرَعَ وَالرَّغْبَةِ the, To know the mas'ala immediately and to know what the sheikh, especially with the scholars, what he sees as an opinion in this matter and to see the even the truthfulness and the wara and, and things of that nature. So there's immediate benefit from the scholar when he answers the question when a person doesn't understand something. And the later benefit, uh, uh, that he will be protected from lying later and hypocrisy uh, and things like this. Why? Because, again, a person is in the journey of seeking knowledge uh, if he doesn't understand things, he might think that he did understand when he didn't understand. So to make sure that the matter is very clear so that he doesn't fall later into something as a result of this. Uh, and as the previous quote about al-haya' or arrogance, al-Khalil, uh, he mentioned something uh, close to this. He said, manzilatul jahl. The level of jahl, the level of ignorance, is between al-haya and al-anafa. Al-haya shyness, al-anafa is from the anf. When someone is, you know, his anf, when his nose is up high like this, that means he's arrogant. He doesn't like to, uh, I guess, he humiliate himself or so. So he would stay ignorant because he's too shy to ask and he's too arrogant also to learn and things like this. So he's, he, the, the jahl is in between these two levels. Uh, it will be mentioned inshallah ta'ala fi adab al-alim because the alim or the teacher have manners to observe uh, one of which is that he should not ask the one that is shy hal fahimt he knows that someone didn't get it you know from his experience from his knowledge and he saw he know that this is maybe uh, above their level yet and that student is shy he should not tell him did you understand to embarrass him there's no need for this, unless there's a benefit, of course. But rather, he would try to explain it uh, more if he sees or he senses that they don't understand. But if he does say that, the student should think good about the teacher because he wants uh, him to understand. Uh, so uh, if he doesn't understand it, he should not say, yes, I understand and lying about this. But rather, he should say, he should say I didn't understand it or I maybe I missed something. So again, to make sure that we understand what is being said. And sometimes it becomes even more apparent in matters of fiqh and whether it's in tahara, ibadah, in transactions, things like this. Number 10, uh, uh, He says here, an nawba an nawba is you have a turn to read, for example, right? a session of reading the hadith, reading the Quran. And this is your turn to recite. Uh, and people will take turns. So to make sure that you take care of your turn, don't go ahead of your turn. Uh, don't miss your turn. Unless, again, there's an exception or unless there is uh, certain circumstances. And uh, one of the Ansar, he came to the Prophet uh, and he asked him, Min Thaqif, and a man from Thaqif, uh, he came also to the Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam. Fakala Nabiu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ya Akha Thaqif, inna al Ansariya Khat Saba Kaka bil Masala, Fajlis Kayma Nabda Abihajatil Ansariya Kubla Hajatik. He said, Oh, 
brother of Thaqif, the man from Thaqif, the Ansari, he came before you, asking about a mas'ala, asking about something. So Fajlis, sit till we take care of the need of the Ansari before your need. So respect your turn. And this is also one of the etiquettes. If someone that is not a student of knowledge, you would overlook sometimes the bad manners because they don't know the manners. But someone is a student of knowledge, he should have the manners of something important like this. You find, for example, the people, they go to a scholar and they ask him questions. And people are taking turns. Someone came before you. Then you should wait and, and be patient. And the time that you wait is ibadah in itself. Make dhikr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And don't get angry uh, that you're waiting too long. Many people, they would say this. You know, he, and you would see that even clearly. I see that all the time. So, for example, someone is asking a question. Someone is waiting. And then after some time, that one waiting starts getting upset and angry. And he shows that very clearly. So it makes it comfortable to everyone. right? And then it's uh, sometimes, yes, the one that is asking, he's taken too long. But what if it's a serious matter? So be patient, especially, you know, people when they go to the doctor, for example. The appointment is at 3 o'clock, and they have no problem to wait till 5 o'clock. Because the doctor is not going to uh, just make it quick for the patient when he needs it. There's no such a thing as, even though I heard that they time it sometimes, but this is betraying to the patient. Five minutes only. Yeah, five minutes, and then what if there's a certain situation that requires more attention? So the people need to recognize this and be patient with it, especially that when it comes to asking, when it comes to matters of deen and asking, this is if the only one that knows the answer to your question is in the farthest part of the world, it's worth it to travel to him and to spend so much money to get your answer and to come back, even for one mas'al. They used to do that for one hadith. This is matters of deen. Not that you call a scholar, he didn't answer. Who cares? Why is he like this? Like, you know, people, this is for those who are not learned. For those who take the path of knowledge, they have the patience. And the most important, the valuable thing, the most valuable thing is for them to get to benefit from matters of end. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ said to the one that comes after the other, wait, wait till we finish with this one, I will be with you. Unless he has to leave and things like this, then it's a different situation. So, muraatun nawba, and whether it's in the dars, your time to study, your time to recite, or whether it's to ask a question. And then he says, Qal Khatib, uh, in his book, al Jama' al-Akhlaq al Rawi wa Adab al-Sama', which is like another book of manners, he said, يستحب للسابق أن يقدم على نفسه من كان غريبا لتأكد حرمته وجوب ذمته. The one that has his turn, it's recommended for him that he would let someone else to take his turn if he's a غريب, if he's a stranger. You see that someone come from a distance uh, or something that is more rushing than you, you have time. So let someone else, the, this person to uh, take your place. This is a good thing. And uh, subhanAllah, I remember, I don't like to talk about some personal things, but long time ago, I went to one of the major scholars without mentioning names, I, and I had a question. And subhanAllah, it was a, a journey to ask about a specific situation. And it was after the there's hundreds of people around the scholars. And I'm I very, very clear, I look like a stranger. I'm the only one that wears different clothing than them. They allowed me because they saw me different. And they allowed me to go to the Sheikh straight to ask the question. So this was, uh, till today, appreciated so much that the fact that they allowed this. Uh, why? Because a stranger comes, someone that doesn't look like them. And there were hundreds of them. So uh, this is something that is mentioned in the books. So the students, they, were, they, they learned this. When someone is a stranger, let him first, uh, since he might have a, a need more than you and things like this. Uh, and um, so, uh, and also, if the one that is his time is didn't is not there yet, and the sheikh knows about it, he might uh, say to the one that his uh, time is not yet there. Someone came before him. He might choose the one uh, that his not his time. So the one that is his time should not get angry, because maybe there's a reason why he did this. There's urgency, things of that nature. So a person should say, "This is my turn. Why would someone take my turn?" Well, if your teacher does this, he would not do this as the normal thing, but there's an exception. Maybe he sees something or there's something, so you should have good expectations of it and be patient, inshallah ta'ala.
So if there's no exceptions, then some of the people of knowledge, they disliked for someone to give his spot to someone else. Because this is a matter of deen, and you should be competing in these matters. وَتَحْصُلْ تَقَدُّمُ النَّوْبَةِ بِتَقَدُّمِ الْحُضُورِ فِي مَجْلِسِ الشَّيْخِ أَوْ إِلَى مَكَانِ Who takes the first spot? It's whether the sheikh, he makes a, a schedule, or the norm is those who come first. So for example, this session is about uh, reciting from memory. So the one that comes first, then second, and so on, then they will be according to who comes first. Um, وَإِذَا تَسَاوَقَ ثَنَانِ وَتَنَزَعَ أَقْرَعْ بَيْنَهُمْ <clears throat> All kinds of things come up as a result of this. People are the same, they came in the same time. And each one of them, he wants to be first. Maybe make a, draw a lot between them. Or uh, the sheikh would, uh, even part of the respect to those who come, he would say who wouldn't want to give his part for the other and things of that nature. So there is the iqra, because part of secret knowledge is that you have to recite what you're going to memorize as we heard to make sure that you recite it correctly, whether it's Quran, Hadith, Mutun, even things of that nature. Uh, there is three more, but we don't want to take two more than what the time is allowed here till 7.15. We'll stop here, inshallah, ta'ala, we'll continue at 9 o'clock. So we stopped at number 10. And by the way, this is also still brief. And the more the person, he just have an idea. That's, for example, there's adab at etiquettes to be observed when taking turns. So when you have this in your mind and you have some idea of it, then when the practicality of it comes, Right? Leave yourself to your teacher to correct what you do wrong and take that as part of the adab. The adab, they did not take it as from books and then they wrote it. They saw how it's uh, conducted and they wrote books as a result of this. And this is how they learned it from one generation to the other. Sometimes it takes a while for people to learn these etiquettes and manners instead it becomes the norm. So don't be upset. Don't feel grudges or anything like this. As a person, If a person says, no, this is wrong, wait. Uh, let him come first. Think, these, these types of things should not leave any uh, issues in the hearts of the people because they're all in the process of learning. And that's part of the good expectations of the one that is teaching. So we'll stop here, inshallah, at number 10. Uh, and if you have any uh, questions, please go ahead, inshallah, ta'ala, and also to see what's uh, things online. Anything that is not clear? Thank you very much. ولا مستكبر ولا مستكبرين نعم لا يتعلم العلم مستح ولا مستكبر مستح نعم نعم Regarding the point about uh, asking questions, mm -hmm. is it preferred to ask right at that moment uh, when you're afraid you are going to interrupt the show, right. or better until the end? Hopefully, they'll be asking the like we have been. Right. Uh, with the question, is it better to ask right there when a the person uh, is not understanding something or to wait to the end? Uh, the first thing, it depends on what the, the sheikh or the teacher. Uh, he would make it as a rule of the sessions, whether he say wait to the questions to the end, or if he allows for the questions to be on the spot. Usually, it's good to have this, the questions on the spot, but sometimes it's prevented by the teacher. If he knows that people are not quite yet into the level where they would ask precisely, you know, once you open that door, someone might know exactly that he just want to, oh, this is not clear to me. Someone else uh, he sees that there is questions, then the there becomes a conversation between the teacher and the people. You know, and someone come up with something in mind. So that's why it's it, the norm is it's better that, to keep it at the end, unless specified that it's okay. Uh, it is the question, right? That was number seven, number eight. Okay, we said, um, 
don't sit in the middle, don't sit in front of everyone. Right. Um, oh, do not stick out from the halakha. The one that right after, do not lean on to someone or to make someone like your arm rest. And do not be taken out of the halaqa by coming forward or going backward. Just sit with everybody else. Now it is. So there's a question here. What is mutun? Mutun is the metan. The mutun is the plural of metan. A metan is what the people of knowledge write in a subject of ilm, very precise, where people would learn. Like the books of fiqh, for example. Uh, you know, metan, the, the book of fiqh, for example, Aksar Mukhtasar, the metan, meaning that that he wrote something very, very precise, and then the met is to be explained. So this is what the ulama, they write in the subject of it. Is it from adab to not sit behind or the side of the teacher? Uh, yes, it's from the adab not to sit behind him, or not to sit right on the side of the teacher, uh, but to be in front of him. Uh, but in front of him to the right, in front of him to the left, this is what has been mentioned, but the best place is to be right there in front of him, uh, and then people will go, to, of course, to the right or to the left. And it depends from one place to the other. But yes, if there's no space, then it's, there's no harm. The place is very crowded. And the teacher, for example, is in the middle of a place, like in the haram, for example, with some people sitting behind because there's no other space except that. And number three, also for the uh, exam this weekend on mannerism, should we have the hadith memorized in Arabic? Uh, we won't be strict in memorizing the hadith this time in Arabic, but mashallah, this is good if you want to. But as long as we get these manners and we uh, wrote the notes of it, and that the exam should be, inshallah ta'ala, in such a way that we we kind of uh, wrote notes that we have the subject uh, understood, inshallah. But not necessarily memorizing the hadith, but the quotes to understand it and the hadith also to get the, to, to understand the meaning of it and to use it if it's needed. Uh, number four, can you please explain two benefits of asking, immediate benefit and later benefit? Yes, uh, the the immediate benefit is what the sheikh would say, especially if someone is a scholar, and if he answers the questions, he would give you more benefit. He would, uh, you would know the, the opinion of the sheikh in the matter, for example, uh, and, and more benefits that can be taken from his immediate answer. And his, and he mentioned here even his sidq, his truthfulness, his wara' maybe, uh, advises things like this. And the later one, if a person pursues the path of knowledge, and this mas'ala that he would develop in himself if he doesn't understand something, that this might lead him to misunderstand other things, and he become in a position where he's asked or things like this would make him fall into lying or hiding, or even... Uh, high, uh, lying for, for example when he's asked later did you understand he would say yes when it's not things of that nature or he would forget uh, so this is comes later sometimes as a result of missing a mas'al especially if it's an important one that he didn't understand no, no. no it, is, is it inappropriate to make, ask the sheikh to repeat something on the spot no it's not inappropriate it's okay um, and there's nothing wrong with that. As long as it doesn't open the door for, again, the dars to lose its uh, continuity and people start disturbing things. But yes, if you missed something, and as mentioned before, if someone, say for example, you're sleeping or you're not paying attention, and then you, uh, you, you pay attention, should you ask? No. But if you're taking care of the dars and you're making sure that you're focused and you missed something, then ask. Right, so if it's something of neg negligence of one's oneself, uh, then a person should wait and find it later. Even though the matter is easy and it should be easy, especially with you know, imagine the gathering is full of people, thousands of people, and then uh, things becomes very difficult that way. But if it's uh, small sessions like this, uh, then it's easy, inshallah ta'ala, and people should ask to make sure that they don't miss anything, inshallah. There was a question last night about the fifth point. Someone missed the fifth point in this chapter. Uh, the fifth point was. Uh, anybody knows it? Let's see here. If anybody knows it. Start with the small events. Right. The fifth point is when you finish the sharh, when you finish the explanation of the the short summarized books and the mutun, and you 
read it right and you understand it, you memorize it and you get the explanations of it, then you go to the mutawalat or the long books, uh, but don't go to that to the long ones before you you master the the short ones first. Uh, there was a question, is the exam open book? Uh, no. <laughs> inshallah. Anything else, inshallah? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah. 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 Alhamdulillah.